The mission of the Martha's Vineyard Shellfish Group is essentially to protect and restore and enhance the shellfish resources on Martha's Vineyard. And one of the things that is, comes part and parcel with this is that we can produce millions of shellfish in the hatchery, seed shellfish, but if we don't have clean water and habitat to put them in, then we're kind of wasting our time. So any water quality issues is, is things that we get kind of dragged into or excited about doing. So we wrote this proposal for Massachusetts Coastal Zone Management, and the request for proposals they put out was called Green Infrastructure Pilots Grant, Pilot Grants Program. Um, and they were looking for any natural or green take um, on for a solution for some of the problems that coastal communities have. We looked at this and said, well, this is an opportunity for us to work with Gukensia. Um, Gukensia is the marsh mussel, the rib mussel, because any kind of living shoreline marsh restoration, the mussels and the marsh grass have almost co-evolved together. So you need both of them if you're gonna do restoration. So the idea was that um, we said, well, we'd like to do this restoration of the marsh, but it's also gonna require that we produce Gukensia. So we would like to get funding to do some experimental hatchery culture and nursery culture on Gukensia. So that's, that's the big picture is that we develop a methodology where we can reliably produce a hatchery source of the rib mussel seed rather than collecting it from the wild. Marsh areas attenuate wave energy when there's storms coming in, so the waves can hit the marsh before they flood the road and hit the houses. Um, they also provide um, nutrient attenuation going the other way, so when there's nutrients coming from the road runoff, they come into the marsh and the marsh can help absorb those before they go into the water. So they kind of like protect both ends. Marsh areas are also spaces where it's really important nursery habitat for lots of fishes and invertebrates. As the marsh floods, fish can come up and feed on dead plant matter that we call detritus. And they also, you know, now if you can, you know, hear all the trucks now, for us, they also protect our roads absorbing that wave energy and that storm energy and it's this really critical interface this really small area and you go places like the Delaware Bay and there'll be marsh as far as you can see but they're losing it too with sea level rise the salt water creeps in and the marshes are very uh, specially zonated different plants take take up different areas of the marsh because they can tolerate or they like the salt and some of them don't like the salt as much. So with sea level rise, that's going to start changing all that too. Today we're in Trabs Pond in um, Edgartown and we are planting Spartina grass on the coral logs that we have installed last week with the charter school. We're going to try to see if this large area can fill in and be turned back into marsh. What we're trying to do is demonstrate the potential of the application of this particular technology, which was developed pretty much in the Delaware Bay, to New England and sites here in Massachusetts we installed marsh restoration installations and they consist of core logs which are made of coconut fiber all biodegradable the kind of material they use in um, all sorts of erosion control projects so we installed the core logs and secured them in place and then we planted spartina alternaflora plugs and the spartina plugs are meant to help stabilize the log and become part of the marsh in with the grasses we also planted adult ribbed mussels. And those ribbed mussels nestle in with the grasses. They filter the water. Um, they deposit their feces right in with the grasses and help to, to fertilize them. They have this really nice relationship. What we're really trying to build is a piece of the marsh. We're trying to put in components that exist here. Um, the coconut fibers and, and burlap type materials um, emulate the kinds of fibers that are in a marsh and we're planting in the native species um, and there are all of these same native species adjacent to our installation so we're really trying to get it to to meld together and just to become one in, in some short time. 
The people in Delaware Bay, they basically told us that these work in areas that are not terribly high energy. That's where they've been most successful. In areas where there's a lot of energy, meaning wave energy, uh, current energy, that they don't work as well. So when we proposed the project, we said, well, let's look at two low energy sites and two high energy sites. So we want to see how they compare. Um, you might find that it works better in some situations than others. You might find that the waves are too much over there. Or we might find the waves bring in sand and it fills in easier. We don't know yet. Um, at the moment, Eggertown and Oak Bluffs have gotten funding to do something larger scale. So right away, they'll be able to learn from you know, the things that we've, that we've done and they can implement a larger project um, based on the, this, you know, the bumps that we've had along the way. And with their project, we'll be producing um, ribbed mussels for them. So, so I think we're really excited about that, that, that right away we'll be able to apply what we've already learned to a bigger project here. So that's, that's really great.